In this next video, continuing our video of factoring polynomials, we're going to look at factoring the greatest common factor from trinomials. And let's take for a first example. Oops, let's change our colors here. Let's take 4x to the third y squared minus 8x squared y plus 12x. All right, so Jillian, thank you again for coming to help me. What do you, um, what, what degree polynomial do we have here? How many terms we, do we have? Three. Three terms, okay? So we know that whatever common factor we factor out inside our parentheses, we'll still have to have three terms, right. okay? All right, so what are we, our coefficients in this case? It'd be four, negative eight, and 12. Okay, so we want to try to factor out the greatest common factor between four, eight, and 12. So what is the biggest number that divides evenly into all three of those? Four. Four. Okay, so let's pull out the four, and again, I'm going to leave a little bit of room for any variable common factors. Okay? So we can take our variables one factor at a time, so let's look at the x's. Does each term have an x to the first power at least? Mm-hmm. Okay, does each term have an x to the second power? No. No. So as soon as we answer no, we know that we've found the greatest common factor, right? Mm -hmm. Which would be in this case... x to the one. x to the first, yes, or just x. We can write it as just x. Okay, now we notice that we also have a variables of y to different degrees. We have a y squared in our first term. And we have a y in our second term, so y squared and y. Is there a y in the third term? No. No. So can we consider a y as one of the greatest common factors to be pulled out if they don't all three have a y? Uh, no. No, we cannot. So we pull out the 4x, and now remember what we talked about. Since we started with three terms, we'll have to have three terms in the end. Okay? So using the same technique that we did in the previous video, 4x times what missing factor would give us this first term? So we already have the 4. We don't need anything there. Correct? Mm -hmm. x times what would give us x to the third? x squared. x squared, exactly. Because x to the first times x squared would be x to the third. All right? And now we have to keep the y squared that's already there. Right? Mm -hmm. Because we want what we end up with to look as the same as what we started out with. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's move on to the next term, the middle term here and look at what we factored out. So four times what would give us the negative eight? Negative two. That's correct. Four times negative two would give us the negative eight. And how about x times what factor would give us the x squared? Just x. Just an x. And then we have a factor of y there, and we don't have any y's outside, so what do we have to put here in this spot? Just a y. Just a y, correct. Okay, good. Now, are we done? No. No, why not? Because we still have to figure out... How to get from 4x X to... 12x. 12x, right? Remember, we started with three terms here, so if we're factoring out a term, a, a factor, a common factor, we have to have three terms when we're done. So is it going to be positive or negative? Positive. That's correct. Positive and 4 times what is 12? 3. And x times what is x? 
One. That's correct. And so therefore, three times one is three. And so now we have our greatest common factor factored out of this trinomial. Okay? Mm -hmm. Let's try one more example. Given the trinomial 12x to the third plus 18x squared minus 30x. Once again, we're going to look for the greatest common factor in the terms of this trinomial. So, what do we look at first, Jillian? The coefficients. That's correct. So that would be 12. 18. 18. And negative 30. And negative 30. Okay. Okay. So do you see, Jillian, a common factor between 12, 18, and negative 30? Um, two. Two, yes. Actually, 2 times 6 is 12, 2 times 9 is 18, and 2 times 15 is 30. Now, the purpose is to, or the goal, actually, is to factor out the greatest common factor. So can you think of another factor that is common to all three of those numbers that is bigger than 2? 6. 6. Okay, good. So we're going to pull out a 6. And now we have to look at the variable parts of our terms. And they all have just one variable, right? Right. X um, of different degrees. This one is x to the third and x squared and x. So we know that we can factor out what power of x? x. Just an x, you're right. Because we can only take out as many as they have in common. Right. OK? All right. So now we have our greatest common factor, and we have to figure out the trinomial that's left. And again, it is going to be a trinomial because we have to find the missing pieces for each of these terms. OK? Mm -hmm. All right, so let's do that now by asking ourselves, 6x times what would give us 12x to the third power? It would be 2x squared. 2x squared, good. And 6x times what would give us 18x squared? 3x. 3x. Very good. Because we already have an x to the first out here, so x times x would give us the x squared. Mm -hmm. And finally, 6x times what missing factor would give us a negative 30x? Negative 5. Negative 5. Exactly. The x is already here, so our last uh, term will just be a constant. And again, we could check by using our distributive property and multiplying them all out again to make sure that we end up with what we started with. All right, so thank you, Jillian. Now, in the next video, we're going to explore factoring trinomials into binomials. Sometimes they can be factored, and this becomes an important concept in later um, classes of algebra. And so we'll look at that in the next video.